athletes, Coach Mitch here, and today we're going to go ahead and discuss squatting. Squatting is an integral exercise to pretty much any strength program, and a lot of people can really struggle with this exercise for a myriad of reasons. Like I discussed in the five steps to performing better, not everything is perfectly universal. Different body types will create different positions in squatting. If you have a longer femur, if you're tall, if you're short, whatever it may be, no squat will look identical. But there are certain things that we should look for in a good squat and certain cues that we should be able to utilize to our benefit. A lot of these cues are the same cues I use with my athletes. So falling in line with the five steps to performing better video that the cues that I use still start with organizational understanding or like the step one in that video where we should understand that ideally a squat should be done in a good postured position. I shouldn't be hunched over slumped under the bar. I shouldn't be really disorganized in my spine to be able to be locked in and using those stabilizing engagements as we go forth. Sometimes this goes into just understanding really the role of the glute and the abdominals in any form of exercise, which is to stabilize the hips and stabilize the spine. We don't want to have a deviant spine position where we're flexing and extending and going through all of this because if these parts are moving while we're trying to move an external load or even if we're just trying to move ourselves because we ourselves can be the load that it's going to be more energy expressed in stability and less energy expressed in power so this compensates our movement this creates bad habits this really affects a lot of things that come along with the squat and any other form of exercise i'm going to give you guys a little lesson here if the hip moves, the spine moves. The hip is directly connected to the spine. So if I arch my back or try to push my hips back and not tilt my torso with it, obviously my low back is going to bunch up and curve more. But ideally, in theory, we should be able to keep a nice straight spine. Ideally, we really shouldn't move in position from head to tailbone. If I come down and I squat, I don't want to pull my vertebrae out of that stacked alignment that I would normally be in if I was in good posture. Now, this requires a couple different things. For one, good mobility. If we have bound up hip flexors, overactive hip flexor, if we have weak abdominals or weak glutes or so on, this can affect it. So just like I talked about in the five steps to performing better video, that sometimes we can just focus on where we can move well and then build upon improving more range moving well. So if you can only squat here to here with good form, then that may be where we start. But without even needing to add weight, if I can improve my mobility, improve my hips, improve so on, and be able to engage the glutes better, whatever it may be, if I can go down to here, I've already gotten stronger. Because remember, force is weight over distance. So if I can express the same weight through more distance, I'm expressing more force. Now, when we talk about position on the squat, we really need to start at the feet. So if you're standing and your arches are caved in and you're leaning on the inside of your foot, you're already setting yourself up for failure. So we should be able to keep a straight line through the middle of the foot, be able to have the foot spread. The toes should not be pulled back. I can see some people go to squat and their toes are lifted. We don't need the toes lifted. In fact, we want the biggest platform on the ground as possible, barring the arch. We want the arch nice and active and the arch lifted. So sometimes my cue is keep the weight more on the outside of the foot. Because if I lean on the arch, my knees go in and we have valgus fall. I don't want to squat like this. And this just looks goofy. If I keep my weight more on the outside of the foot and I can push all my toes into the floor, if I go down a squat, my hips are open and I'm typically in a better position. So from there, if we can keep that 
full foot planted, I want to know where my center line is. Some people may have a little bit forward or more rear center line because of length of the femur or whatnot that I explained at the beginning of this video. But ideally, we should maybe see a straight line down from the front of the ankle, sometimes to the mid ankle. So when we're pushing ourselves up, we're really pushing straight down into the floor. And if we're not pushing straight down to the floor, if we're going into the ball of the foot, you'll start to see a lot of compensations happen when I change my load. If I change my load position during the exercise, that means something's not staying tight. So from here we have weight on the outside of the foot, keep that load line front of the ankle to maybe middle of the ankle. And then from here it comes into engagement. So if I can't keep my glutes engaged, I'm doing myself a disservice because as soon as I let my glutes go and I go to come down, I immediately start compensating with the low back. Okay, I don't keep the straight positional line like I show in the deadlift or the hinge video where we have that hand drill where I'll organize, I'll tighten, I'll squeeze the glutes, and then when I hinge, I have no change in that hand position. If I have a change in the hand position, I have a change in my spine position. Ideally, we want to be able to squat without that change, just like the deadlift, ideally. Now, when it comes to squatting, the glutes need to stay fired the, the entire time. So, in the use of the glute, we stabilize the spine, we externally rotate the femur, and then we have hip extension, okay? So, in all of those components, a good cue that I like to use for this is pinching the heels. So, if I'm standing, and I pinch my heels, I keep my heels pinched. It's like I'm trying to draw them closer together without like really rotating the foot out, but pinching the heels together, you should feel your butt just really squeeze. Sometimes if you need some visualization, imagine like you're trying to crush something between your butt cheeks. To do so, you have to pull all that tension into the center between your butt cheek, okay? Right there. So if I pinch my heels together, watch. My knees, boom. We have that external rotation. So, firing the glute. This also pushes the hip forward when I do this. So when I pinch my heels, if I'm relaxed, and then I pinch my heels, you'll see my hip wants to push forward. Keeping that hip underneath the spine is what's critical. In line with that spine is what's critical. So if I stay off the arches of my foot, I put my entire foot flat on the floor, except for the arch, I squeeze my heels together, and then I brace my abdominals like I'm getting ready to get hit in the stomach. When I go to squat down and I keep that good load line, okay, I should be in a fairly good position, very pain-free in the spine. You may have some muscles turn on in the back. Not a tremendous problem, really not a problem at all. But when we go into trying to make these exercises perform repeatability. So step number five, we need to be able to keep everything engaged and turned on the entire time. So then the effort isn't put into just holding on to the bar, holding on to the weight. And the effort is really in stabilizing down, exploding up. If I have all this movement, I'm putting energy in this movement, in deviating position, changing positions, and so on and so forth. And then if I have an external load, every time I move, that load moves, and it's physics. So then I have to stabilize this as well. So the less moving parts you have in your torso, the more turned on you are in your glutes, you are in your abdominals, and with good breathing, the less stability challenges that you'll have as you go along. Because then all you have to worry about doing is keeping everything engaged and then squeezing, holding, coming down, breathing out, <coughs> and expressing force on the way up. Controlled, ex controlled load on the way down, explode up. Eccentric phase with control, concentric phase with power. If we're unstable on our eccentric phase, we're probably going to be 
very unstable on our concentric phase. I know this is a very lecturing video, but this, this is a very critical component to any type of exercise, any type of drill, any type of performance related habit physically. If we're stable, if we're organized, if we understand our load line and we can breathe well, then we will repeat each one well. So when I have people doing squats, let's say they're doing barbell squats, I want them to reset their breath every rep. I don't want them pumping out a bunch of reps in a row without stopping. I want them to breathe in, hold the abdominals like they're about to get hit in the stomach. And sometimes I come up and I knock on their, knock on their belly to make sure that they're holding tight. Hold up the breath on the way down, breathe out explosively quickly like you're exhaling and about to get hit in the stomach. I know it's kind of a sucky one to worry about thinking about, but it makes a big difference. Rigid in the core, rigid in the glutes means good rigid position through the hips and the spine, which means more power expressed through the legs in our squat. What do we do to, what do we use the squat for? We use the squat to provide more strength in the legs, more expression of power in the legs. So if we're not organizing everything else, our legs are doing less work and we're expressing less power. So these are basically my steps to doing a good squat. Now, if we have issues with engagement, there are some drills that we can do. If you have trouble feeling the glute, when you're pushing the hip forward or trying to push the hip forward, sometimes just warming up with a single leg glute bridge works wonders. So a single leg glute bridge is really simple. You just have to lay on your back, have a leg up or knee up, head back, pushing into the heel pretty much exclusively. You're going to push the hip as high as you can. Okay? Hold it. The longer you hold it, the more you're going to feel where that tension should be. If you hold it for 30 seconds and you can't feel your butt firing, then you have a problem. The other one is using a band. We can use banded bridges and banded body weight squats to fix that activity in queuing or warm up for a loaded squat, a barbell squat, you know, whatever it may be, a kettlebell squat. And I didn't pick red because it matches my outfit. I picked red because it's a little bit more tension. So if I go into doing a banded glute bridge and holding, keeping the hip high and actually just holding, now you should feel not only the center of the glute firing, but the outside of the glute firing. Kind of like I said, that pinch the heels together, because what's going on? My heels are actually rotating it together. If I turn and face this way, when I go to open up and stretch that band apart, I'm really firing through the glute, I'm pushing the hip up really high, and I'm really contracting. So then the other method would be utilizing this in a squat. Once you can kind of get feeling in the glute, then if I go into squatting with the band, I can feel what it feels like to externally rotate, pinch the heels together, trying to make sure that I maintain in good position from the front. This would be without fighting the band, fighting the band. You see how my hips open up, my feet are still flat on the floor. I'm not hard arching my spine. I keep keeping that whole organization. Now, sometimes to keep this organization, it requires us to hinge deeper into a position. If you have really long femur in relation to your torso, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna lean in quite a bit. So sometimes the things that can help are a little bit wider stance. That's gonna force you to use the glute more, but the quad less, because the more flexion we have in the knee, so more bend in the knee and the more forward the knee comes, the more the quad's gonna work. But we need to remain with the heels on the ground. The wider the position, you'll notice, my knees don't move as far forward in relation to my ankle. If I come here, the squat looks a lot different, okay? But you'll notice that my position is much more upright. So if I go wide, my posture, everything, more upright. If I go narrow, it leans forward. 
So find the position that works for you and your body type. Find if you need to be a little bit narrower squatter or a little bit wider squatter. But fire the glutes, know how to brace the abdominals. Breathe well and repeat your rep to your breathing. Follow steps one through five on the five steps to performing better video. And you'll find a lot of success with your squat and you'll find that they're a lot more comfortable than they, than they probably were. So thanks for watching the video. Hope to see my athletes very soon. In fact, I'll see some of you guys in the morning, I'm sure. Um, but practice these. Become excellent at them. Have more control over your body, and you'll have more control over your performance. Thank you, guys.